Yeah, we of course have to talk about Heartland, Graham, because it was a huge part of your life. 12, 13, 14 years. It's been a long time. But now, fortunately, you aren't a part of the show and fans are devastated. I Mm -hmm. read so many comments. Some don't even like want to watch the show now without you, which I think is really sad because it's I don't feel like the show is the same without you, but it's still really, really good. It's kind of taken a different direction now. Mm -hmm. But I did also want to share with you, like I did see a lot of messages from fans that just want to tell you that they respect your decision and they just want you to be happy, which I thought was really, really beautiful. That's why I had to share that with you. But did you think that leaving Heartland was going to have such a big impact? I know that I, I think for some people it's really impacted a little bit of their mental health, especially through this pandemic as well, that they're binge watching heartland and then all of a sudden you're not there yeah it, i did not expect this reaction i knew that there would be it would be tough and mm. it would not be what people wanted i knew you know it wasn't like people well there might have been a few people that were like yeah get rid of them get rid of it <laughs> but <laughs> i haven't seen one comment like that yet <laughs> I, I haven't seen those yet but i'm sure there's there's somebody out there um yeah it, it was really tough uh, for me it's been a couple years uh of conversations and of just asking myself, is this the next step? And a lot of it was very, it was very difficult for me to, to make this decision. And I spent a lot of time just tuning in and asking myself, is this the right step? Is this the next step? And, um, I normally, I can normally feel based on, you know, tuning into my heart or my gut and just kind of connecting with myself. Um, I know what's, what needs to come next. And Mm. I've had a few moments in my life where there've been difficult decisions and I know that's what I need to do, but I don't want to do it. Like, I don't want to do it. Like my mind's like, no, like just ignore your heart. Just ignore that. Just keep doing this. And you try and create all these excuses and reasons, um, why you should doubt yourself. And, um, and then the tricky thing too was, you know, a lot of people said, well, you know, why, why are you leaving and what, why, why this? And, um, and I'm like, ultimately it comes down to, I have to honor myself and my heart and I can't ignore that. Mm. And I've done it in the past and it's never worked out well and I don't want to do it again. Um, so then the process was just, um, you know, how to work with the production and the, the creatives on the show to, to make that transition as, as, as best we could, because I think everybody knew it was going to be a really tough transition for the audience and, uh, that it would be difficult to watch. So that's why I came back for season 14 and I did some, uh, we called it ghost work, you know, doing, playing a ghost of, of the character. And, uh, because I, I personally wanted to do everything I could to, to make that transition and to honor the character, uh, that I had created with, along with everybody else. So that, that, that love and that the inspiration and the passion of that character and and myself, my work to that, for that character could be felt, you know, and it wasn't like cold Turkey, just like, Mm. you know, he's gone. Like some shows, you know, you see some shows like that and the characters just like, "Eh," and they're gone. It's like, cool. He's shot. Yep. Bye. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I didn't want to do that. And, um, I also, when I, when I create experiences, I work very hard to honor the audience and their journey and their investment. And it's kind of a catch 22 because, you know, audiences, uh, have expectations and, and what they, what they want. And so, you know, taking that into account while also honoring myself, uh, is, is tricky because you don't want to upset anybody. You don't want to make anyone mad, but, um, I think it's important that everybody sort of honor themselves and uh, be true to themselves. Cause from that place, whatever you create, whatever you give, you're coming from uh, whole, you're coming from a whole place. You're, you're, you're loving yourself. You're in tune with yourself and what you create is going to be of a completely different caliber than if you're ignoring yourself, you're denying yourself, you're not loving yourself or taking care of yourself and you're just doing it because somebody else wants it. And, uh, and you want to please them. You don't want to upset them. So I think it's really important that when people create like yourself, when you're creating the show, you love it. You're, you're not creating because 
you know, other people have an expectation of you. It's coming from an authentic place where you love what you're doing and you love yourself. And that shows up in your work and in your, in, in this show. And I think that's important that people get to that place. So I was, I was very appreciative and surprised by the support uh, and the feedback that came when the episode premiered this year. Um, I was, I didn't know what to expect, but I was very, very humbled and, and uh, grateful for all the support and all the people that just wanted to wish me well. Like, I, I, yeah, it's hard to like, it's hard to like fathom sometimes how much this show has reached, you know, how far the show has reached. I got a message from um, one of my friends. He's like, you know, you're trending on Google right now. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, go to the Google search bar. And like, I don't remember what, what, where it was or something, but there was, it had, it had Heartland or, or Graham Heartland or Ty Heartland or something was, was trending in the Google search. And it, it just, I just took a step back and I was like, this is, this is such a blessing, such a beautiful chapter of my life. And I am so grateful that I've been, a, been, been able to be a part of it. Um, so yeah, so to answer the question, I was very surprised, very humbled and very grateful for the response uh, and the support. And, um, and yeah, Amber and I did a, a podcast about, you know, the character's departure and, and just trying to explain to people that there's, there's no bad blood. It's not like I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm done with you. Or like <laughs> Amber and I got in a fight and we can't act together anymore. It's like, no, like, it's just, this is, this is where we're both at, you know, where I'm at, where the show's at. And I, I hope that people continue to watch the show and to, to have a great experience with it. I know it's going to be different and life changes, life happens, you know, mm. things happen in life. So, um, I hope people can find a new appreciation for the show and find new stories that they enjoy and, and become reacquainted with the characters and, and this new flavor that it, that it offers. Mm. Well, I do love that you put yourself first. You know, you had to think about your future. Obviously, you're not going to be in Heartland forever. I'm sure the show is not yeah. going to go forever. <laughs> yeah. So you did have to think about that. And now with this podcast, you love doing it. That's obviously something you're going to focus on. Are you going to continue acting as well? Or are you going to go more down that creative path of producing and creating your own art? Um, acting, I'll probably put on hold for a bit right now. Um, I've, I've wanted to produce my own content for a long time and acting, I, I, I know in the future I'll most likely do some more acting, but in the immediate future, I'm going to take a break mm. and, um, and just focus on creating my own content, my own stories, my podcasts, you know, finishing my second book and, uh, and just, yeah, working on my own projects because very often when I start working on my own projects, then my agent will call and say, oh, you got an audition for, you know, you got these 10 pages to memorize for tomorrow. And it's like, everything's on hold. <laughs> now it's like, you got to do this. And that's kind of the world of, of an actor is you're, you're constantly auditioning. You're constantly putting yourself out there and whatever you're, you know, working on when the, when the phone rings and your agent says there's an audition, it's like you drop everything and mm. it's like, away you go. So um i'm i'm now sort of at this point in my life where i'm like if i don't commit to and and invest in myself and put out this kind of stuff that i want to put out i may never do it because i might just get caught up in another role and then that becomes you know the next chapter of my life um so i've made that decision to kind of invest in myself to to tell the stories and, and produce the content that I want to produce and share myself with the world in a new way. So mm. that's the new path that I'm on. I love it. And uh, creating your own art as well. I think a lot of, you know, the, the audience kind of forget that it's kind of how, what you have to do in entertainment, because even if you were wanting to go for auditions and get some more gigs, you are out of work for a while until you do get that gig. So to have your own side projects on, you know, side projects on the side, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Projects on the side. Yeah, yeah. But then you've always got something to work on and you're always still going to be in the field of entertainment. So I, I think even though there's probably heaps of fans crying right now going, no, I can't watch him on the screen anymore. You can still listen to his podcast. You can still listen to his voice, yeah. watch our interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And hopefully yeah, in the future there'll be something. Who knows? You might pop up on a Hallmark movie or something with Cindy Busby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who knows? Yeah. And that's, uh, and I'm open to, uh, 
to doing, you know, and I love doing interviews and such like that. And maybe it's a small part or something um, that would come up. And, and I still do my cameo video messages for people. Um, I'm not, it's not like I'm not going to be on screen. Like you're not going to be able to see me. It's just, I'm taking a break from playing, you know, Ty. <laughs> Ty and yeah. also big, you know, big character commitments, you know, uh, cause I want to focus on some of my own projects. Mm. Well, good luck with it all. I'm really excited to check it all out. Do we, do we have a release date for the second book yet? <laughs> You're asking all the good questions, Lauren. Thank um, you. There was a few fans <laughs> that asked that one, but yeah, <laughs> I'll take credit for the other ones. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, I'm working on it and it's, it's evolved because of what, everything that happened in 2020. Uh, I've mm -hmm. learned a lot about myself and, um, I've really just asked myself, what is this all about? Like what, what's the silver lining in this for me? And I, I have written probably over a hundred, uh, different pieces of writing for the book and I don't always put them all in, but I write a lot and then I kind of trim them back to the ones I like. But then after 2020, um, I just took a step back and I was like, I've learned so much that I want to share that in this book as well. I, I, I think it's very important because our world is going through a massive transformation and lots of things are changing. And I, I really want to express myself and um, share my heart with, with people in my writing and in my work uh, and specifically in this book. So there is no release date. <laughs> <laughs> when it's done, it's done. I don't want to say set a date and then it get pushed. I already did that. I said it was going to be done by the end of 2020 and you know, 2020 came and, and went. And, and, um, so now I'm like, you know what, when it's done, it's done and it'll be out there and people will be like, Oh, it's out now. Cause I don't want to create any expectations. So sorry guys, I don't have an answer for that, but, um, that is okay. I'm, yeah. Just do me a deal. When it does come out, come back on the show and talk about it with me. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> then everyone will know it's out. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. I'll do a press. What's it called when you do that? Press tour press or release. something. Yeah. Press tour. That's it. Yeah. Press tour, <laughs> press junket, all that. <laughs> press junket. Yeah. Now I know this is a bit of a deep question, but did you know you were going to be leaving Heartland? Was it in the process when you were last on our show? <laughs> um... About a year ago. So probably was but you just yeah. didn't know oh, when no. yeah 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 um yeah yeah this was this was this was a couple years um in the in the process so uh, you know i you don't say that kind of stuff you can't say that kind of stuff no 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 hard feelings like it's okay so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> what was the reaction from the cast like and was it hard saying goodbye to them i, I know that you still keep in contact with well, a lot of them yeah. i don't know about all of them but i'm sure they yeah. were sad to know that you weren't going to be on set all the time <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, this was, you know, I think, um, like I said, this was a couple of years, so it wasn't like, uh, you know, all of a sudden, like, what, what's going on? Like this was, this was a long period of, of conversations and of talks and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah. And it's, you know, I, they're like a family, you know, working 14 years with the same people every day, mm. uh, you know, learning how to support each other, learning everyone's quirks. Um, you know, Sean has a, a wonderful quirk that I love him for that when he's, it's something about dinner table scenes when he's at the dinner table and grandpa Jack has got a line to say, and it's a very important line. <laughs> Sean will, uh, sometimes he get in, he gets in these little, little moods where he'll say the line and say, no, 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 go again. And then someone will say their line to lead him in and he'll say it again. And, uh, he'll do his line again. And he's, <laughs> yeah, it's just, well, I don't know if it's perfection is as much as like he, he honors the story and the authenticity of that moment so much. He doesn't want to uh, mail it in or pass it off or just kind of like whatever, like he's, he's very committed. So um, that's one of his quirks. And, and there's so many, I'm sure there's in the blooper reel, he'll do that. <laughs> um, and I, I love him for that. And there's little things like that that I'm definitely going to miss working with, um, with Sean and with Amber and with Carrie James and, and all the different people on set. Um, that I get to work with on a consistent basis, you know, had a lot of fun. So I'm uh, going to miss them all. And hopefully that there's, you know, projects in the future we get to work together on, have Sean on the podcast, you know, stuff like that. It'd be fun to reconnect. Mm. Uh, I'm sure there was probably a lot of crying on that last day. <laughs> well, you know, it was interesting. My last day, uh, because was I was doing yourself, ghost I'm work, guessing? Yeah. I was by myself. That's I was weird. by myself. So it was very odd. It was... A, <laughs> It was, it was extremely odd, but I, I, you know, I got to connect with a few people there and, and say thank you. And I had written 
thank you notes and and uh, reached out to people before that last day. But yeah, the last day was a was very odd. Normally there's like a, you know, that's a wrap on on so and so for for the show or for the episode or whatever. Um, it was very odd. It was very odd because it was all because I was the ghost. You know, I was in the ghost. I did a lot of green screen stuff too. That was oh, first time cool. doing the yeah. So that's Heartland green screen stuff. Well, I really um, take it off my hat off to Amber for being able to act like you're there. Like that must be so hard. <laughs> and I know you it talked was... about that in your interview with her. I was just like, yeah, yeah that's true. She would have just had to pretend you're there <laughs> and somewhat <laughs> well, be emotional. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that happens. Uh, you know, the actor has to go, the other actor has to go change or, or they're sick or, or something happens or you know, some actors, uh, you know, they're not on camera, so they just kind of mail in their performance and you're kind of like, ah, give me something here. Like, <laughs> and so you have to kind of be like, okay, uh, I'm, I'm envisioning, I'm feeling something completely different. And you have to kind of move into that because uh, sometimes they're not there and sometimes you're not getting anything from the, from your, your coworker, mm -hmm. which happens rarely, but sometimes it does happen. So you have to do your best <laughs> to imagine it. And bless my gators on Instagram wants to know, would you consider teaming up with Emma Marshall again and starting a new project together after uh, Heartland? Um, yeah, Amber's great. Uh, we've had a, a, a couple conversations, um, you know, from in the podcast and then afterwards as well, we've, we've kept in touch. So I'm open to that idea for sure. Um, you know, Amber's such a professional and she now produces Heartland as well. So she has that experience uh, of working with the team and the production and, and whatnot so she's a very very talented woman and i think that would be fun if, if that opportunity arose i would definitely be open to that mm. and i i did see on my instagram a lot of fans actually asking this question too would you ever return to heartland to even direct an episode like michelle and, and chris have done yeah possibly um i hadn't thought about that to be honest that'd be cool the fans could be watching I... an episode and your name just pops up down the bottom going directed by <laughs> great model <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, that would be cool. I, I mean, I definitely have a lot more. Um, uh, what's what's the, I got to strengthen my directing muscles, you know, because I know Michelle has has done a lot more of that work than I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she worked very hard to get into that position to to direct. Um, so that that would be some some preliminary work that I would have to do just to kind of uh, make sure that uh, that my involvement would bring out the best in the show. And it wouldn't I wouldn't be you know, the show would, wouldn't have to like pick me up. You know, I want to be able to contribute to the show as opposed to the show kind of like hustling me along to get it done. Cause I'm, you know, inexperienced. Um, but yeah, no, that's, I'm always open to opportunities. Um, and I think, you know, if it comes up and it feels right and there's something I can contribute and everybody's happy, then I'll, yeah. I think it'd be fun. Good question. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was all. Uh, several fans asking that. So thank you, fans. <laughs> and have you been watching the new season as well? Because I have. And it feels weird not to have you in it. So I'm sure you personally of playing that character for 13 years must feel weird not to be on the show now. It is weird. Um, it is weird. And um, but it it's weird. I would say it's more odd. I'd say it's odd. But that's where I'm I'm excited about the the exploration of a new journey of the characters mm. growing that's that's something that i've always enjoyed about heartland and any project for that matter is the growth of a character is the expansion one of my favorite expansions and i've mentioned this before is in season two when the heartland universe world went to downtown calgary and ty was being chased by the bikers and it was a completely different aesthetic Mm -hmm. to the heartland horses and, and farm life and then you know eight years later when ty goes to mongolia another whole different aesthetic and different life and, and expansion of the world and, and i think that is exciting if done right and if done within the the flavor of the show it can really add to the experience and to the journey so that is my that is my hope and that is my uh wish for people to go on a new journey with the show and, and to find a new expansion of the reality for, for, for the characters and for that world. So, well, something I love yeah. about Heartland, and I'm sure a lot of fans can probably agree with me, is just how realistic the show is. You know, when I spoke to Michelle, that whole 
um, part of whatever season it was when uh, Lou and Peter get divorced. You know, that's realistic mm-hmm. in life these days that unfortunately, yeah, kids are going through parents getting divorced. Um, death is a part of life. So unfortunately, even though we didn't want to lose Ty, death is a part of life. And now, you know, the whole family have got to go through it. And as you said, it comes back to the growth. Yeah, and, and I I hope, you know, with all the stories that I'm, I, I'm a part of and want to be a part of, I hope that that is his opportunities for people to find healing, to find um, the space to allow themselves to feel something that maybe they have shut out, you know? Mm. Um, I, I think that's important. If, if stories were always just, you know, on the surface or not dealing with divorce or death or some more serious things that happen in life, you know, my opinion would be that people kind of feel like if that happens to them, then it shouldn't happen because they don't see it on TV. And, um, and I know that there are other shows that deal with these kind of things, but Heartland is a very wholesome, very, uh, rooted uh, show. Uh, you know, there's no violence and very, very little violence. It's a very family friendly show. So dealing with those issues, those difficult issues, I think is important. And I'm, I was, I am really proud to have been a part of it uh, and all those stories that were, were told. So you should be. It's, yeah, it's good. Mm. And the whole underlining, you know, message of Heartland is that, you know, your family's always there for you. So even if you are going through something really, really sad, like a death, the rest of your family's there for you. You know, sometimes your friends become your family, which also is shown yeah. in Heartland as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I hope the whole new season is really, as you said, kind of getting the message across to a lot of people and making them feel a bit better, even though they are unfortunately losing one of their favorite characters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a bit of a catch 22, unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah. I got two more fan questions here too, before we move on to a game that you wanted to play. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Jenny Derpler, I hope I pronounced that right. Zero one six on Instagram wants to know after all these years of being on Heartland, what is your favorite storyline and not just Amy and Ty, but any of the characters? Oh, of any of the characters? Yeah, oh, I know. That's why I was like, that's a really good question. <laughs> so the storyline that hit me the hardest in the heart was when Tim was covering up his cancer uh, mm. and he went to Mongolia and he didn't, hadn't told anyone that he was, um, that he was sick. And there's a scene where he sees, he wakes up early in the morning when they're out looking for Ty and he sees this bird I want to say it was like a falcon or um yeah i think it was a falcon and the sun is shining and he looks at the bird and the bird looks at him and then it flies away and he just kind of looks and he's just kind of in this moment and when i first saw the rough cut uh the editor uh had called me into the or i was speaking with the editor in the office ken filowich and um in his office i should say and he showed me that scene and he had put in some temp music and uh, temporary music. So they, they kind of sometimes before the composer has time to put in the music, they will put in a, a track that is kind of like the feeling that you're mm. that they're looking for. So anyways, he played the scene with this temp music and I was sitting behind Ken. And when I watched that scene, I, I just, I wept and I was so moved. And he turned around and he was like, whoa. Like, <laughs> And I was like, dude, that is so good. I was like, can you play that again? And it was the combination of the music and the scene and the storyline and, and the way Chris played it. And just, it was Bruce McDonald directed it and it, it just hit so hard for me. And so that to me is a storyline that it kind of encapsulates what I really want to communicate to people is that like life is so beautiful. And when you really look death in the face, everything that matters reveals itself to you you know exactly what matters Mm -hmm. and you know exactly what doesn't it's all it's all crystal clear and so that was my interpretation of that storyline of of um tim sort of recognizing what was important and and reconnecting to himself and to nature too in that sort of beautiful mystical moment with that that bird um so yeah that would be my um my favorite storyline my favorite moment uh, because it was so impactful, mm. it was so beautiful in my world. And just after that, like watching him watch Ty and Amy reunite was also just so yeah. beautiful. Like that, yeah, I agree. That whole storyline is just 
Oh, it's giving me goosebumps. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And uh, Mike and Elizabeth Cazares, sorry again if I pronounced that wrong, want to know what it's like doing kissing scenes, for example, and, and just relationship scenes in general without having real feelings for the other person. Because <laughs> Amber is married, right? Still, yes. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Um, yeah so it's, it's a lot of respect and it's a lot of um, just talking things out. So you you... You have to be very professional. You have to be very respectful. You have to make sure you know what they're comfortable with. Um, Amber and I've been working together for 14 years, so we have that history of knowing, you know, how to work with each other in that in that space and how to be respectful. Mm. Um, and it's always it's always under the guise of you know it's very similar to you know people say oh how do you do those kissing scenes? Well, it's very similar to when you do those scenes where you're really angry at somebody or you're really upset with somebody and you're staring at them like you want to kill them. It's like you're not really, I like you. You don't want to, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to kill them. Um, so, so it's this, it's very similar where you're acting and you're putting yourself in the position that, uh, this character, uh, feels this way or, or is upset or is in love or, or whatever the case may be. And it's always done, you know, anger or love, you know, you're doing a fight scene, you work it out, you know, I'm going to throw this punch or I'm going to yell at you this, you know, so you, you know, so that you can do it safe and mm. you can do it respectfully. And um, that's a that's a relationship, that's a working relationship that you develop and you you work on so that both people uh, can feel safe, they can feel respected and they can do their jobs. Um, and you have to draw a very clear line. You have to be very careful that uh, you don't judge someone because you've been, you know, hating them as the bad guy for however many years <laughs> and distancing <laughs> yourself from that person just because you've generated all these emotions and forced them at that person. Uh, or projected them and vice versa you know you're generating all these these love emotions all these caring emotions for somebody that you don't cross that line and and blur that line um and take it outside the the professional working environment so it's a it's it's a mental process and it is a conversation and it is something that uh i have learned the importance of because well joe dispenza talks about this if Joe Dispenza ever sees this, I just want to say, I'm sorry, Joe Dispenza, if I <laughs> misquote I'm your- I'm so your honored lesson. if Joe Dispenza watches this video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I just want to say Tag that I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm speaking a little bit out of school here um, because it's his work, but what I learned from his work, I'll say it this way. What I learned from his work is it, we have thoughts and we have feelings and on a consistent basis, the way we think and the way we feel generates our personality. Mm. And our personality will then create our personal reality. And I took a course from him a couple of years ago and he was explaining this. I'm like, oh, this is fascinating. Cool. Okay. And then he said to me, or he said to the audience, um, you know, a lot of people change the, try to change their lives, their personal reality, but they don't change how they think and how they feel on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. So if you think and feel on a, on a consistent basis, a certain way, but you're trying to change your life, it's a non-starter. It's not going to work because that's what informs your personality, which is how you show up your attitudes and all these different behaviors and all these different things. And I was like, Oh, this is fascinating. Cool. And then I thought, what if I played a character for 14 years and I generated thoughts and feelings for a character that wasn't real. And I created in my body and in my mind, this personality, which created a person, a personal reality that was stronger than me. And this, this became a challenge for me that once I discovered, once I made this connection, a lot of my challenges in the past with, uh, feeling disoriented, um, in this, this whole chapter of my life, which I did have many moments of disorientation of like, Oh, what's going on here? Like, uh, I'm losing myself. And, uh, when I finally got that insight from Joe Dispenza, I recognized how as an actor, if you don't take care of yourself and do that work, when you're coming home from set, uh, when you're off on your own life to love yourself, to take care of yourself, to go with, go into uh, pain or trauma that you haven't healed and deal with that kind of stuff, then acting, if you don't do that, then acting or the character becomes an escape. Mm. And I now see that as being unprofessional and, um, not wise. So it's, it's what I have learned is, and this is not true for all actors. I'm just saying from, from my perspective, 
And from my experience, having had trauma in my past and pain in my past, playing a character for 14 years on an unconscious level became an outlet for me, an escape for me to not have to deal with that. Because honestly, I didn't really have the tools and, and the understanding of how to. Hmm. So that's where I feel a lot of lines can be blurred and, and things can get messy and, and uh, you can get disoriented. Um, because the world of acting is thoughts and feelings and behavior, and you're doing it on a consistent basis, you're creating a personality to create the show, the person, the, the shared reality of the show. And so um, once I got all these pieces in front of me and I started looking at this, I was like, oh my God, right. If I don't take care of myself, if I don't take care of my own heart, my own feelings, my own uh, pain and, and things that are going on, on in my own life, I starve it. And it, and, it, and it becomes uh, uh, brittle and, and, and uh, unhealthy. Mm. And so that was something that nobody, nobody in any acting class, they don't tell you that when you start a show. That hey, just so you know, uh, be careful because if you haven't you know, dedicated time to investing in yourself, to taking care of yourself, and you're trying to escape your life and live through a character, uh, this is very dangerous. You're and really you need gonna to be lose aware yourself. Of you're really going to lose yourself. And mm -hmm. nope, there, there's no conversation around that. I don't know how often that happens, but it happened to me. And, um, and I, I think that that's, you know, something that I, I really try to work on to be like, where am I? Where's, where's Graham? Like what's happening to him? And, um, anyways, I kind of went on a tangent here, but you asked me about kissing scenes and I kind of expanded it to anger. And my point being is that what I've learned is that it's about respect. It's about understanding the boundaries of the confines of the job that you're there to do and um, staying within those bounds and uh, doing your job as best you can. It, it's not easy, but it's, it's, that's, the, that's the, the tools of an actor, of creating realities and, and generating those thoughts and feelings for the character to um, give birth to the reality of the show. Hmm. I love when you go off on a tangent, by the way. I learned so much more. <laughs> Feel free to do that anytime. <laughs>